Hi, how are you? This is Angela from North Carolina, and I was just going to share a story that means a lot to me, and you may not believe me, but it is very true. My mother owned this lamp. It was a very special lamp. When we lived in New Jersey when I was young, my father bought it for her for an anniversary from Tiffany's of New York, and it is a three-foot-tall Waterford crystal lamp. It takes me and someone else to carry it because it's over 50 pounds. It's just exquisite, except I haven't polished the brass in a long time because my hands hurt. But I had a little story to tell you about my mom. 37 years ago today, I lost my mom, and it was really hard as it always is. She was only 52. And that evening, my best friend had out-of-town company, and she had invited my daughter and I over to eat. My husband was working late, and I was so antsy, and I kept saying, I've got to go, I've got to go home. And they didn't want me to go, but I kept insisting that I had to go home. And so we got to my house right at 8 p.m., And the phone was ringing as we walked in. And when I answered it, my mom said, I wasn't going to call you back. I figured you were out for the evening. So she and I had a nice discussion. She was having a party the next week in Atlanta for all the family. And I was coming down and I was going to cater all the food. And so we had a really nice conversation. And then at the end, my two-year-old said, I want to talk to Grandmama Annie. So I put her on the phone, and they talked for a little bit, as well as you can with a two-year-old. And then my daughter said, I love you, Grandmama Annie. And that was the last thing that my daughter ever said to her. And right before my daughter took the phone, I had talked with my mother about this new medicine she had gotten that day. She went to the osteopath in Atlanta that did the Falcons for a bad knee and he took her blood pressure and it was at stroke level and he should have called an ambulance and he did not. He reached in his drawer and threw my mom some samples of pills and told her to go home and take these and see how um, she did with them and let her doctor know. So when she and I finished talking, she said, I'm going to be a good girl and I'm going to go take that medicine as soon as we hang up. So then she spoke to my daughter. We hung up. She was at my grandparents' house, and she lived down the street. So she was getting ready to leave, and she went ahead and took her pill. And within five minutes, she was almost unconscious, and her last words were, that medicine, that medicine. And she was gone. And the next door neighbor came over. My grandparents were 90 and in no condition. They were in shock. They couldn't do CPR. They didn't even know how. And the next door neighbor was a volunteer fireman, and he had learned CPR. And he brought my mother back three times but kept losing her because he was the only one doing the CPR. And when the ambulance got there, uh, they brought her back once. And I, I may have already said... Her last words to my grandparents and that she ever uttered were that medicine, that medicine. And my family called me 30 minutes later and told me my mother was gone. And I was like, she can't be. We just hung up the phone. But it was true. So I was in a fetal position laying on our porch crying when my husband drove up. And he didn't know what had happened. He'd never seen me like that. My mother was my closest friend that I ever had. And the next day, of course, I went to Atlanta to help with the arrangements. And then my husband came down with our daughter. And, um, you know, it was rough, of course. She was 52 years old. I had a brother still in college that lived with her. And there were a lot of broken hearts. Well, The lamp you're looking at was something that meant a lot to her. My father had bought it for her for an anniversary 
at Tiffany's in New York when we lived in New Jersey. And it's a three foot tall Waterford crystal lamp. It weighs 50 pounds. I saw this lamp next to Princess Diana in Kensington Palace when she did an interview years ago, which I thought was so cool that I had the same lamp, you know, as Princess Diana in a castle. And this one was bought in 1962. And I've been offered, I can't tell you how much for it, but it's not for sale. But the cool part is, when I came back home from Atlanta after my mother's funeral, I wrapped up this lamp and took it out of her house and brought it home with me because she loved this lamp. And the lamp meant so much to me because it meant a lot to her. I let my brother have all of her furnishings because he was going to have to set up his own house. So this is the only thing I took. And it's got a pull chain. Let me pull it. I'll show you. There's a pull chain. So I am grieving horribly for my mother at home. And I had probably only been home three days. And I had put this lamp in my bedroom. And I had started crying. And like, Mom, how could you leave me? It was very hard. She had just had her first grandchildren. She had my daughter and my nephew. And we it was so hard to believe she was gone. And while I was crying, I heard the chain on this lamp go tinkle, tinkle, tinkle as it hit the light bulb. And it was going really fast. And I, st I stopped the chain from going tinkle, tinkle, tinkle and held it. And when I let go, it's hitting the light bulb again and you're going to laugh or you're going to think I'm insane but my mother has always communicated with me through electrical things she saved my life once when I was in a car and it was I was near the interstate with one of those horrible monsoon rains where you couldn't see and I was on the phone and I heard my mother say hang up and I hung up, and there was an 18-wheeler hydroplaning, and it was coming right for me, and I ran off the road, and it ruined the car behind me, and I think that they did die. And then while I'm on the side of the grass, I heard my mother say, I'll never leave you. I'll always take care of you. And there have been other things with lights blinking, and you know, you don't have to believe me, but... I believe it. When my father died, I needed some real important papers. My mother blinked the lights in the room where they were. I mean, my dad and I both would laugh about my mother and the blinking lights. So I always, it, for years, I would think about my mother with love. And I had a picture of her that I used to keep right next to this lamp that's in another room now that I would kiss my finger and touch the picture every day. And after I would do that, I would hear the chain tingling again, tink, 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 on the light bulb. And it gave me such peace to somehow know my mother was communicating with me. I really needed her in my life. She was my very best friend and gave me such good advice about my daughter. She never got to meet my son. So many years later, the lamp quit working you had to turn a light bulb to make it start. The chains were no longer working because, like I said, this was bought in 1962. See how huge it is? And um, so I took it into a lamp shop in Charlotte, and they said, well, don't you want to get rid of these outdated chains and get a switch? And I said, no, no, you have to leave the chains I said, my mother communicates with me with this lamp. And, of course, they looked at me like I was insane. And um, so I ended up having whatever was electrically wrong fixed, and the chains began to work again. And the night that I brought the lamp back home and put the lampshade back on it and plugged it in, it wasn't five minutes before the chain tinkled again, hitting the light bulb. 
it just, it's, I've always felt like my mother wasn't ready to go. She, she was so young at 52. And I don't know if somehow part of her soul ha, has been trapped. I do believe she is an angel because she was an angel in real life. But this lamp, you know, it just means the world to me. And if the house caught fire and I could grab one thing, I would grab the lamp and then maybe try to grab my kids' baby books. But I don't mean to cry, but it is a very emotional story for me. And like I said, you don't have to believe me, but whenever I've needed comfort in my life and I'm in the room with the lamp, the chain will tinkle. You'll hear it doing it. So it really has given me a lot of comfort. And um, like I said, today would be 37 years since we lost her. And um, I know that she's still with me. I still feel her presence very strongly. And I always feel it through electricity. I have an uncle that contacts me with feathers. And my friends have always kidded me about my close relationship with the dead. I'm a good Christian person, but I've always had like an affinity for the dead and felt empathy for them. And like I said, this lamp, it's a family heirloom to us now because of the fact that my mother did love it so much and the fact that it will talk somehow give me messages. But I just wanted you to see how pretty it is. And even if it didn't talk to me with the tinkle tinkle, it's really one of the most beautiful Waterford crystal lamps I think I've ever seen. But I love you, Mama, and I'll miss you forever. And I know 37 years seems like such a long time ago. But when you lose your family or your parents suddenly, the hurt is so much different. I lost my father to cancer. He suffered for years and years. It was expected. He would die. He was 90 years old. At 52, my mother wasn't expected to die. But have a nice evening, and I hope that you listen to this with a grain of salt. But if any of you have similar stories, I'd love to hear them, because I truly can't believe that people that loved us that much can leave us 100% when they know that we still need them in our lives. And of course, I won't find this out until I cross over myself, but it does give me a lot to think about. Well, have a nice evening, and I will talk to everyone soon. Bye-bye.